Story time is back. This is how I transitioned from film to digital and then back again. Welcome to the Visual Center. I'm Trent. This video was actually inspired by one of our viewers' comments. Pedro FPS was curious about how his knowledge of film photography would translate to digital photography. We really appreciate your comment, Pedro. Thank you. Now transitioning from film to digital or back and forth is actually fairly simple. I work in both workflows and I find that the knowledge I gain from one format translates fairly easily to the other format. There are some differences and we'll go over those in a second. The most important thing is gonna be your exposure information, your aperture, your shutter speed, and your ISO. That information works similar in both formats. Now ISO is gonna work a bit differently and be sure to watch this video I made a while ago regarding film and digital ISO. But basically, all three of those components of the exposure triangle are gonna work the same. Luckily, modern cameras include a light meter. That light meter is gonna tell you if we're correctly exposed. If we're over or under, we're gonna change our aperture, shutter speed, or ISO to compensate. And that's regardless of format, film or digital. Now, as I mentioned, ISO works a bit differently, but it's also fairly similar. When we move to a higher ISO number, the noise is going to increase, whether that's digital noise or increased graininess from the film. Now, one small consideration when considering exposure of film and digital, digital cameras are more in line with transparency film or color positive film. It's easier to blow out the highlights and lose detail in those highlights. Where negative film, it's easier to block up the shadows and lose detail in those shadows. So certain situations may call for different considerations on my exposure, whether I'm shooting negative film or digital. Now, when I first started in photography, I was shooting film. I was shooting on a Nikon SLR, like this and 80. It's a great camera, I still shoot on it today. Now, a few years later, I transitioned from film to digital. I bought my first digital camera. It was a DSLR, a Nikon D200. Now, I couldn't shoot above 400 ISO on that camera. It was so noisy. But that transition from film to digital was fairly easy. Instead of developing my film or taking it to a lab, now I uploaded it to a computer and did my own post-production all from my laptop. But I found that I actually started to miss the darkroom and the experience of shooting film. And so a few years later, I actually started increasing the size of my film. I got a medium format camera and I also got this large format 4x5 camera. Now in my practice, I shoot both digitally and on film. Now there's a number of reasons why I choose one over the other. Oftentimes, if I'm doing commercial work where I'm getting paid to create images, I'm gonna be shooting digitally. If I'm doing my own artwork, my own personal work, I'm usually often gonna to choose to shoot it on film. One of the biggest reasons why I choose to shoot digitally for commercial work is the speed at which I can turn around those images. I once was an editor for Getty Images. We used to shoot, edit, and upload images in a matter of minutes. Those images would often show up in a news article within a half hour of us shooting the image. If time is money, one of the best advantages of digital photography is the amount of time you save. This is also one of the reasons why I love film though. Film slows me down. A good day shooting on my large format camera is gonna be when I get four to five images. Now that slower process of film photography extends into the development and printing process. If you've ever had the opportunity to be in a darkroom to develop your own film and then print your own images, that process of seeing your blank piece of paper turn into the positive image from your negative is an amazing experience. Now, when I usually take students into a darkroom for the first time and they see an image appear on a blank sheet of paper in the developer, they're amazed at the process and they wanna try it. Now, the best piece of advice I could give to anyone that would like to try or transition from one format to the other is just to try it, just to do it. It's fairly easy and I think you'd be surprised at how much information or knowledge you have that would translate to both formats. Now, one consideration that you need to be aware of is obviously don't expose your film to light. If it's inside the canister, keep it in the canister. Make sure it's rewound before you open up the back of your camera. And if you're shooting digitally for the first time, don't ever stick your finger inside the digital camera where your shutter is or where your image sensor is. It's just a bad idea. We'll continue to upload videos to this channel, The Visual Center, including videos all about film. So be sure to subscribe so you can follow along. It'll be a great opportunity to see how your photographic knowledge translates from one format to the other. If you do have any questions regarding film or digital photography in general, please add them to the comments below. We'd love to hear from you and we'd love to make a video about one of your questions or comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Digitally, digitally, digital, digit, digitally.